Hey y'all, it's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. I have some stuff that I need to get done with my quail today, so I figured we can talk a little bit about management when it comes to quail. So let's hop into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that it is winter time, which means we need to set up something to create more light. So the days are starting to get shorter, which means we aren't getting enough light for all of our hens to start producing eggs, which isn't a problem if we weren't using those eggs to incubate, to create chicks, to create revenue for the homestead. So instead of letting them go into a malt and no longer lay eggs, we bought some little cheap solar powered lights to wrap around the coop that turn on as the sun goes down and we can control on a timer so that we continue to get 12 to 16 hours of light in a day to make sure that they are producing eggs through the winter. When it comes to the management of quails, when it comes to both roosters and age, what I like to do is use zip ties. And this is a cheaper version of using leg bands when it comes to keeping track of your quail. And let me show you how this kind of works. When I have young quail going into an adult pen for the first time, I put on these little zip ties. And what this does is this allows me to keep track of the age of the quail going in as well as if they are a hen or a rooster. For a hen, I'm gonna put it here on the right leg. For a rooster, I'm going to put it on the left leg. And all of my babies are coded by color for age. So if I hatch something from this year, it's going to have a red band. Next year will be yellow, the next after will be blue, on and on and on so that I can personally keep track of about how old all of my animals are. So what you're gonna do is you're going to put your zip tie into a little loop like this. You're going to sex your animal and then you're going to take their leg Get it into position and just get it up there before pulling. You want it loose enough to where it's not cutting off the animal's circulation, but tight enough to where it doesn't flip over the toes. And then you are going to cut off the long band. I'm just going to take that band, take my clippers, and I'm going to cut that as short as possible to the band that is on the leg. Other parts of barn management that we should be looking at when we're cleaning out our cages and looking over our animals is how they are doing condition-wise. Are they being overused by a rooster? Are they fighting? Do they have medical problems? An example of this is this little hen right here. If you look at her back, it's pretty plucked bare. So she is being overused by a rooster. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to try first what I'm going to try first is putting her into a new pen with a more docile rooster to see if that helps. And if it doesn't and she's not able to really hold her own, we'll end up culling her. So I'll give her another month or so to try to get along with a new rooster. Another thing I do on monthly checks is I check bottoms of feet to make sure we don't have any bumblefoot or overly long nails. Um, I have one rooster uh, in my jumbo white cage that uh, he gets an overgrown beak, so that's something we trim up and keep an eye on. But you just want to look over your animals and make sure that they are generally healthy. These are the transport cages, so we don't keep these guys in here long other than to clean out the cage but I'm seeing a problem right now. Um, so these are all hens and those are my roosters. And I didn't realize I was running this low on roosters because we've had some unfortunate incidents with some roosters fighting where we had to cull some out. So I only have four roosters right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get all of these roosters. I'm going to put them in with some hens that I know the eggs will be fertile. And then we'll just have a pen that just consisted of eating eggs. Um, at least until my next batch uh, grows up enough to where we can have some breeding roosters. So that's a little frustrating. And for the first time ever, I am saying that uh, we need more roosters. Here is our breeding pen with our hens and our roosters. And they're just chilling out here. Again, I like to put in and swap around my animals after we clean it out because they are dodo brains. And they're less likely to fight with each other if they forget what each other smells like. And I have a mix of colors and jumbos in here for now. And here is our eating pen where we'll get the eggs and we'll just collect these for our family to eat. And these hens will just chill and relax here without a rooster for a little while. 
my next batch of hatchlings is about a month off till I'm comfortable with putting them out the adults. So we'll just have a month where we have eggs to eat. But that's kind of what's going on with the quail and our basic management month to month. Um, the quails are doing really good. Um, I do need to start collecting more that I like for our other pens and kind of split them up to decide kind of what I want to do next because we're hatching about 40 to 50 a month and we're selling those, but I would like to keep some more so that we could eventually sell more. And in case y'all were wondering, this is Gus Gus. Uh, Gus Gus is assholes. I think daughter. Are you a girl or a boy? I don't really know. I'm hoping Gus Gus is a girl. That That's the, the hope for everything, but I digress. Gus Gus has been raised with the quail and, uh, has a group of quails she actually lives with because, you know, flocking animals. So I'm hoping here within the next couple of months that Gus Gus can go out with the actual chickens because she is desperately outgrowing her uh, quail friends. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.